What's going on hybrid shooters? It's Jason and welcome to our first impressions of the newly released Sony Alpha 6500. Now keep in mind, this is not a full blown review. This is just us really testing out the features of the camera that is most important to us. So after some real world usage, we will have a full user experience review coming out on January 2017. So be sure to subscribe to be notified when that drops. Now, before we get started, I just wanna let you guys know that we'll be shooting this entire first impressions on another Alpha 6500 in 4K with various lens setup. Details of what we are using will be on the bottom corner of the screen. And towards the second half of the presentation, we will talk about the experience shooting video with it. So without further ado, let's dive right in. Now, right off the bat, the latest feature that has been introduced to this camera is, of course, the touchscreen. Now, there's a lot of reviews out there already on YouTube criticizing how sluggish and how unresponsive the touchscreen is. And at first, I ran into that same problem when I was trying out a demo unit at my local camera store. I often have to tap on the screen twice before it registers the area that I want to focus on. And I had a hard time dragging the focus point from one spot to another. But after receiving my unit and setting the touchpad area to hold the screen, I find a touchscreen much more of a joy to use. Now I'm able to drag the focus point without much of an issue. Yeah, there's a bit of a slight lag, but it's still much faster to change the focus area rather than using the control dial to move the AF point around. Hopefully in the near future, there'll be a firmware update to improve the responsiveness. But as of now, the touchscreen isn't as bad as everyone says it is. Now, the next thing that we want to talk about is more important to those who shoot a lot of video. And that thing is in-body image stabilization. Now, Eric right now is hand-holding the A6500 with the Sigma 18-35 to 1.8 art lens. And we find the results kind of good, right? Yeah? Yeah? <laughs> so, whenever we use the A7R2 and A7S2, we are extremely spoiled by the IBIS, that when we go back to using the 6300, we would feel extremely crippled, especially when we want to use lenses like the Sigma or the Zeiss 24 1.8 lens. So having IBIS on the A6500 is a welcome improvement. All right, we're out here at a local park with Nova the Husky here to test out the 11 frames per second continuous shooting that this camera is capable of. Uh, but more importantly, the writing buffer. If you guys watch my A7R2 review, that you would know the slow running buffer plagues a lot of Sony shooters out there. The A6300 also suffered the same fate. It is incredibly frustrating when shooting in burst mode, especially in a sports or a concert environment, and having to wait until your camera finished writing all the photos in before you're able to review your footage. Um, but I'm happy to report the A6500, the writing buffer on it is significantly better. So now you have a progress bar on the top left corner of the screen telling you the progress of the photos being written into the card. And what's great about it is you're able to review the photos one by one without having to wait until everything gets written into the card first and then look at them. All right guys, it's time to wrap up this first impressions. Overall, I'm thoroughly impressed with the A6500. The touchscreen isn't as bad as everyone says it is. IBIS is a welcome improvement, perfect for any running gun situations. The writing buffer, less pain in the ass. And overheating, what overheating, am I right? And now I know there's a lot of things that we haven't touched up on yet, but they will be in the full user experience review. So leave in the comments down below what you want us to talk about in that video. Until then, have a Merry Christmas, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.